Okay. The only question is, are you going to acknowledge him? Okay. That's the only question that God really has. God is the creator of all life. God is God. Okay. There's no higher power than him. You can't be cleverer than God. You can't outlive God. All right. The only question that God is asking you is, will you acknowledge him? Will you submit to him and follow him? That is the question I'm asking today. Because Jesus says there's, there's going to come a time of darkness where people will not be able to hear the message of the gospel, the good news of the gospel. And their hearts will be hardened towards the message of God, towards the gospel and the good news. Okay? Well, if God, if God has hardened your heart, okay, then... What you should do is ask God to soften your heart towards the message of God. We have just a short time left to get right with God, uh, ladies. And we just, we just, I pray for you. I pray for your salvation. I pray that you stop sinning. Like smoking, drinking, all of these things can send a person to hell. Okay? Such as the Word of God is. I myself get caught up in these things when I was growing up. Okay? But now I've repented, I've changed my mind, okay? And I'm living a better life. That God is more pleased with me today. And there's no use if you bless yourself that you're actually cursing yourself through drinking and smoking, okay? So it doesn't matter if you bless yourself. You're, st you're still cursing yourself if you continue in your sin and you don't repent. That is the message of the gospel. You need to repent of your sin. Turn from your sin. Get right with God. Okay? Hallelujah. Okay, God is not one to be mocked. God knows that you're a sinner. God knows all the sins that you're involved in. Okay? You can't kid God. Alright? He's calling you to repent. Hallelujah. And it is love that someone is actually telling you this. It's just love. If you think about it, if someone's in a burning building, you're not just going to turn their direction and walk away. You're going to go in there and try to rescue anyone who's left in that building. Well, it's just the same with sin. It's just the same with sin. Your body could be in rebellion and sin towards God, burning with all the flesh, fleshly um, aspirations and temptations that the body gets, literally burns with sin. And that sin is going to take your soul to hell unless you actually let Jesus Christ into your life. Ask Him into your heart. And then the fire of God shall burn within your heart and you'll be dead to the flesh. Don't live to the flesh. You're going to die and you're going to reap what you sow. And hell is the reaper and is going to reap your soul. Let Jesus Christ sow His word into your heart. The good news of the gospel. He died for your sin. All you need to do is confess him as your Lord and Savior. And the Holy Spirit shall come in and live with you. And you shall know eternal life. Hallelujah. That is the message of the gospel. When was the last time you heard that message? I don't care what Christian church you say you go to. When was the last time you heard the gospel? The good news of Jesus Christ. When was the last time you heard it? Are you seeking God? Are you just seeking the pleasure of the flesh to please yourself? Are you seeking just to please yourself? Or are you living to please God? Which, which one is it? You know? I mean, basically this life we have, what, 60, 70 years perhaps to live our short lives perhaps get some, some very fleshly pleasure from them and then what happens to you when you die? What happens when you die? Your flesh is eaten by worms but where does your spirit go? Where does your soul go? That's the question. It's free for who though? Everyone, anyone that's got enough money. Who gave you that spirit though? Who gave me that spirit? Yeah. <laughs> who gave you who, your personality was given to you by your mum and dad? No, my personality was given to me by my genetics and the uh, surroundings I was brought in. That's interesting. 
that's an interesting uh, philosophy. Well, basically, I believe that when we're born, we're born with our own souls, our own personalities. Yes, our mum and dad, uh, you know, thank God, you know, they got married and they, you know, they had children. Child. So that, that's they where we... got success first time. That's, sorry? They got success first time. They got success first yeah. time, hallelujah. Well, that, that was good for them. I'm sure they'll be very pleased about that. But where is your soul going to go when you when you die? When this body perishes, when this flesh life dies, and you maybe pass on your fleshly seed to you, your wife, okay, and you have children, but what about your soul? Well, it becomes a ghost and terrorizes people. It becomes a ghost and terrorizes people. <laughs> Seriously. Well, what, what, what if it, what, I mean, there's movies that have been made about this, there's like ghosts, and there's many Hollywood movies that are made about what happens to a person's soul when they die, okay? What does the Bible say? What does Jesus Christ say? He gives many parables, he gave a parable about the rich man and Lazarus, he said that the rich man was living for his own pleasure, and yet there was a beggar that stayed outside his gate, okay? And that the beggar just wished that the rich man would come out and maybe give him a little bit of water now and then, maybe give him a little sandwich now and then, but the rich man just walked past him every single time and ignored him. And then, <laughs> when the rich man was, was actually died, he found himself in hell in torment. And then when Lazarus died, he wasn't in hell, he was, he was actually at a place called Abraham's bosom where he's actually watered, okay? Bosom is, this is the bosom, right? It's the heart. It means, it's, it means, that, it means it's the, the, the heart, it means it's a place of care, in other words. So Lazarus was saved, his soul was saved. He, he led a very impoverished life, okay? A very, you might say, unlucky to him, okay? But God had mercy on him. Okay? And he was known as Jesus Christ's friend. Does Jesus love us all? He does love us all, but he's calling us all to repent. You see? So, he loves us all, but he's going to discipline us. No. <laughs> oh, he's doing the jet bomb out of that. If, 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 what, what's your name, by the way? I'm Fraser. Fraser. If you have children, okay, and uh, maybe one of them's misbehaving, wouldn't it be good parenting to actually let that child know that they're misbehaving? Let's say, for example, they wanted to. Uh, well, but still, though, I mean, if let's well, say if you're allowing your child to throw hot water around, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say not only because you hurt yourself, but you're actually hurting other people, right? Yeah. So obviously, you're going to tell your kid. So well, it's the same with God. Exactly. It says, "God, you've been bad. Go on to hell." Well, that's what happens. I mean, basically, God created us in His image, but because of Adam and Eve's sin, it means that this flesh is one day going to die. Okay? That was the curse that God gave Adam and Eve because they, they actually sinned. Okay? But God did send a savior. You see? So it's a bit, it's a bit unfair if maybe one of your kids have actually done something wrong and you end up punishing them all. You see, wouldn't, wouldn't that be unfair? No, but the Bible says that we're very res res responsible for our own sin. So I'm responsible for my sin, you're responsible for yours. You, you can't repent for your, your wife or your, your uncle. You can't repent for me, you can only repent for your own sin. Okay? Well, this is what the Bible teaches. And that, well, I don't know, maybe one day you will have a wife. I don't know if you're married or not, okay? Yeah, I'm not married. Okay. Is, is it a leap year, is it? Or, really? <laughs> well, you've just missed the full moon, but anyway. I missed the opportunity. Well, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's rational, rational and reasonable what, what I'm actually saying here, that God obviously wants to let us know. I'm sorry? No, he didn't die in vain. All we need to do is confess him as our Lord and Saviour. All we need to do is ask him into our life. You see, there, there, is, a, there is a carnal seed that we sow, right? To, well, I'm, well, you're asking too, too many questions that I can't answer them all at once. Okay, let me answer this girl's question. 
Right, so the, the carnal seed dies, okay? That's the, that's the carnal seed that we are part of, the flesh. But there is a seed that does not die. When you ask Jesus into your heart, that is from a kingdom that is eternal, okay? It means that you inherit eternal life, okay? That's the message of the gospel. How come, sorry? Christians die all the time, like, Yeah, well, Christians are... Life when you die. There's people dying all the time, yeah, but... You're t- I'm you're talking about the soul. Life after you live, after you die, you get to live forever. Is that what you're saying? Everybody lives forever. There, there's, there's, there's a part of us. What, what the Bible actually says in Ecclesiastics, it says that basically man is uh, part mind, part flesh, and part spirit. It's one third spirit. That, that's how we're made up. We're mind, flesh, and we're spirit. Okay. So it's that spiritual part that, that God is interested in. You know. That's basically. Eh? Using us just for spirits. Well, we're created in his image to basically well, house his spirit. Spirits, right? Then humans, very rarely humans will do things in a non-positive ways, and they think they're doing correct. Exactly, but what, right? they're obviously they're not seeking so, God, are they? A lot of people look at all the crusades and all that happens beforehand, calling the name of Jesus Christ and that, right? What happened to those people when they died? Because they were doing things for Jesus. Well, and all obviously, I mean, them in. But all, the, all the apostles had to die for their for faith. Them, all, there, was the right thing. all the apostles had to die for their faith. All the Scottish covenanters had to die. Most of them had to die for their faith. All the apostles died for their faith. How can that be justified? All the prophets, all the prophets in the Old Testament, yeah, basically... Yeah, for their faith as well. And as it uh, all killed for faith. against Christianity and killed people... But it's not Christians that are killing other Christians, it's basically people that are killing Christians. No, it's not Christians that are killing Christians. Well that that, that was actually the Catholic Church, that wasn't Christians. So Oh yeah, so so yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a, so, there's a so big difference here. I'm a born again believer, so I've, I've got friends that are born yeah. again that were Catholics and that were Hindus and that were Muslims and so on. I see convert to some Muslims across. Thank it's God, <laughs> some people are safe. <laughs> we're not. We're, we're, <laughs> are thank you guys. We're, we're not, as I say, we're not converting them to something that's just a little movement here on earth. It's basically we're talking about eternal life, your eternal soul. That's all we're talking about. You know what I mean? Well, there's many branches of Christianity, just so as there is in the other ones. selling points in burning other religions. Like what? paganism, where there's you basically just believe in what's there. Paganism, what? You believe in what's there? Uh, well, pagans generally sort of tend to sort of worship creation and have their own wee mad rituals and whatnot. <laughs> right? I'm not talking about that, obviously. Obviously, that's a different religion, right? I mean, do you know any pagans that, that practice... I might know one or two. Maybe one or two. Well, I mean, where is that leading? It's just little rituals they're doing or whatever. You know, whatever it is they do, little enchantments. Excuse me, pal, that's just fell out your pocket, mate. There you go. So anyway, um, so, so well, paganism is not Christianity, right? Well, it depends how, what, what branch of Christianity you're talking about. Fundamentally. Well, I, I'm, I'm talking about faith in Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about what they do outwardly. Like, as in if they so what about Jews? <coughs> do Easter Bunny things or oh, Christmas no, and all that stuff. About I'm talking about the fundamental beliefs. Not really. What, what, what videos have you been watching? Or what, where did you get that from exactly? Well, I know about paganism. Well, you get totally so, so there's a man in paganism called Jesus Christ that actually died for your sin and rose on the third day. There's, there's plenty of parallels throughout all parts of paganism. Uh, people, uh, well, gods and, and such that die, born of a virgin, yeah. died around about the 21st, 25th of December. Well, he, did, he didn't know. Jesus didn't die around that time. He, he died on Passover, according to the Bible. See, so there's a big difference between paganism and true Christianity. 